let's make a time trial. First we need to find a good spot. This looks good enough for our example. Create a new mission in the mission editor. Name your mission and select the time trial mission type. Place the mission start trigger. Resize the start trigger with the scale field if you wish. Previews and thumbnails are detected automatically so long as they are named as they are requested to be. You can force a time of day here. Messages for the start and finish of the mission can be added here. Here you can select the player vehicle and goal times. This checklist shows whether it is auto-detected the race path and or prefabs. This also tells you how you should name the files too. Ok, let's make a race path. Place the path nodes to mark where you want the checkpoints to be. Shift drag in the direction that you want the checkpoints to flow. Segments join the path nodes to define the route they are placed automatically. For a circuit track we need to add in the last segment to complete the course. Connect the last node to the first node. Now we add the start positions. Rolling start positions make most sense when they are placed before the last corner. Naming things properly is always good. The lap count in the race path editor has been depreciated, so disregard this. The lap counter in the mission editor should be used. For closed circuit time trials, leave the end node as missing. Here we assign the starting spots to the time trial. This classification shows which session types are currently valid. Now save in the mission folder as race. The race path file on the checklist of our mission is now ticked showing that it is correctly named and in the correct place. Now we make the base prefab. This will contain non-directional obstacles. Open the Asset Browser with the Window tab to access more objects. At the top of that you can click Saved Filter and then All Models to see all the main available statics. Find the object you want and double click it to spawn it. Use the top number keys 1 to 4 to help with moving. Hold Shift and move a static to duplicate it and hold Control when rotating to be more precise. When you are happy with the placement of your obstacles, select the top static on your list in the scene tree and then click the folder with a plus at the top to add a new sim group. This essentially is a folder within the level editor. Add all the statics to the sim group. Right click on the sim group and click pack prefab. Navigate to your mission folder again and save it there with the name prefab. Now we do the same for forward and reverse config prefabs. Here we add in arrows or directional markings to aid the player with the correct direction. This and the base prefab are optional to add.
The naming of the prefabs is case sensitive, so remember to check the mission editor checklist to ensure that you have spelt it correctly. Once a prefab has been packed, it can be deleted from the level if it is in the way. Packing it is saving it independently from the editor. To enable reverse and rolling starts, you can check these boxes here. Click the career tab to ensure that showing free roam is ticked. You can also add in your stars here, but I will save the star setup for another video. Before trying the mission, delete the prefabs from the editor unless you're going to restart the game first. And remember to save frequently.